Hi everyone and welcome back to All My Cake Tastry Classes. Today we're going to learn how to make an amazingly delicious dessert which is also originated from France. Pat a choux or choux paste no, yes, choux. <laughs> In the normal language it will sound as a cream puff which is pat a choux or choux pastry. Sometimes it's intimidating, but in this video we will do a step-by-step -step guide and see what mistakes we can avoid to make a delicious cream puff or shoe. Our cream puff will not be regular. They'll have a crispy layer on top, which is called crackling, and we will fill them with silky smooth diplomat cream. As I mentioned in all of my recipes, we have to have everything mise en place, which means all my ingredients are measured out and ready to be used. Here I have flour, a little bit of salt with sugar, butter, water, and milk. Let's start making our custard dough or pat a choux. In a saucepan, I want to combine my water, milk, Then I'm going to add butter and my salt with sugar. I'm turning on my stove and I want my butter with milk to get to the boiling temperature. And meanwhile, I want to sift my dry ingredients, which is just flour, uh, all purpose flour. Just sifting it up really quick. I just want to break all the lumps. As you can see how many lumps, just with the help of your hand, you can break all of them. Like that. So I just want to tell you a little bit what are we going to do next. Now I'm still waiting until my butter melts in my milk and then this whole mixture gets to the boiling temperature. I want to wait two or three minutes and let it boil. And then all in once, we're going to add our flour and very fast stirring, creating a dough. After that, we're still going to leave it on a medium heat to evaporate the remainings of the water. So as you can see now, my butter is almost melted and I think in a few seconds, I will start to see the first bubbles, which means my mixture is boiling. I already see the first bubbles, as I mentioned, and I want to add all in once flour inside. Look at this custard dough. Very fast. It's going to become lumpy, but give it a second, stir it very, very fast, and you'll see this nice and silky smooth dough. I still want to evaporate more water because. I can just see how moist this dough is. Oh, look at that. You'll notice that on the bottom of your saucepan, there is gonna be like a little crispy thing. I don't know how to say it. Crust, like crust. Uh, what is this? Um, it's just <laughs> gonna be from the dough, but that's fine. We just want to keep it another few minutes on the stove to, as I mentioned again, evaporate more water. We don't want our dough to be watery. Oh, oh my God, it's so nice, silky smooth, this perfect bowl of custard dough. So we evaporated for three minutes all the remaining water from our dough and you can see the dough right now. Now we need to wait and let it cool until it reaches 50 to 60 Celsius. And after that, we'll transfer it to the mixing bowl. With the help of a paddle attachment, we will mix it up a little bit, which will help let it in cool. And then we will start adding one by one our eggs. So here's where a lot of mistakes are made, um, the amount of eggs that are added. There, it's never what it says in the recipe exactly you always have to check the consistency. It's pretty much the same as macarons. You always have to look at your consistency. That's why we're adding eggs one by one. And sometimes I even need just a little bit or quarter or a half of my egg. Now we're transferring our custard dough base 
into the bowl of the stand mixer and I'm using spatula or paddle attachment because I want my dough to cool down to 50 or 60 Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius, I'm sorry. <laughs> my life. Now I want to start my mixer and just stir my dough with the help of the pyrometer. Pyrometer is a thermometer that measures temperature of the surface. I'm going to once in a while check my temperature. Now, now the temperature of the dough is 56. Actually, while I was running around cleaning the kitchen, uh, my dough got to the temperature that I need. Now where the most common mistakes occur, it's when you add a certain amount of eggs, either right away or more than the dough needs. In this recipe, you can never know how much eggs you're going to use exactly. It can be four or six. It all depends on how much grams your egg weight or what is the grade of the egg. Sometimes you might need four and a half eggs. So now by showing you the texture of my dough, I'll see how many eggs I will use. I will obviously mention it below the video in the ingredients and the recipe list. So let's start adding one by one our eggs on a stir mode. Well, I just added another pair of eggs and um, I can already see my dough becomes more liquidy, watery, however you wanna call it. If you don't add enough of the eggs, your shoe paste, uh, sh your uh, pastry sh consistency is very important. It needs to fall down the spatula in one stream. So I can see that this is, this is not ready yet. So we need more eggs. If you don't add enough eggs, the texture of your uh, shoe, pat a shoe will be off. If you add too much eggs, your, your powder shoe texture will also be off and you will not get that perfect shoe. Looking at this texture, I can totally see that I can add one more full egg. And I'm stirring, stirring it up again. If I want half of this egg, how do I get half of the egg from the full egg? I'm just gonna whisk it up together and I'll add a mixture of the egg whites and egg yolk if I'll need another half of the egg. Now I whisked my egg. I want to check the consistency again and it already looks, to be honest, like the consistency is perfect. So I might not even need this egg. But I really want to double check by scraping all the sides of the bowl and stirring the dough again but I feel like it's already going to, oh no, not yet. It has to fall from the spatula as a stream. Let's mix it up again. But very soon it's going to happen, so I'm going to start adding drop by drop. I'm adding a little bit of my egg. It starts to fall off the spatula, but it's not liquidy enough. So I'm adding again a little bit of it because honestly, at this point, we don't want to add too much. We always have to check. And I would say this is the hardest part to know the texture of your pad a shoe or cream puff dough, however you want to call it. But we're trying to be fancy here. Here's the pat a shoe is ready. See how I didn't even use the whole egg? I used only a little bit. And here's the texture. Perfect stream. Now that my dough is ready, we will need to let it rest for an hour. But don't worry, we will have things to do during this time. I'm cutting the piece of the piping bag and I'm going to use an open star piping tip. It is a Teco 868. And I'm putting my 
tip inside of the piping bag. I like to use a tow cup to help me hold the piping bag while I'm going to be transferring my pet a shoe in it. So I'm transferring my dough. You don't have to put it in the fridge. You can just put it next to you. This beautiful orange color, yellow color. Mm. And the smell. Amazing. This is one of my favorite desserts because you can even make this savory. You can create the, you can bake the, bake the cream puffs and fill them with cream cheese um, and some basil and some chives, or you can fill them with different types of creams. To be honest, you can like run, make your imagination run wild with these. But we're making a dessert today, so so just like this, and I'm putting it aside next to me. Now, while you're waiting for your dough to rest, go to my other video and make this beautiful, delicious diplomat cream. Now, while my pot of shoe is still resting, I'm going to make crackling. Crackling is this thin little layer of a cookie, which gives a nice crispy texture when you bite into a cream puff. Let's start by creaming butter and sugar together. We would need a stand mixer with a paddle attachment. Butter should be at room temperature. I like to start mixing it on a medium speed um, it's on number two right now here. I want my butter to cream together with sugar for just a couple of minutes. We don't want that um, very fluffy texture, but just until the sugar melts a little bit. I just want to scrape down the bowl a little bit. I highly recommend you do it all the time, no matter what you do, if you're making sponges, if you're making cookies, if you're making cupcakes, creams, everything. Scrape down the bowl all the time. I'll just cream it together a little bit more. Now I'm stopping my mixer and dumping all at once my flour and almond flour. We want to give it a little stir, not more than three minutes, just until the dough is formed because we don't want gluten to develop. We're mixing our butter, batter just until the dough is formed. Our crackling dough is formed. So basically it's like a sugar cookie dough, very similar to the sugar cookie. It's nice to touch. It does not stick to your hands. So I'm not really, I'm not really needing to use gloves for that. And now I want to take two pieces of parchment paper, put the dough on one piece, like that. Look how nice. Cover it with another piece of parchment paper. And with a roller pin, I want to roll it between these two pieces of parchment paper to create a very thin, a very thin layer of a cookie crust. And this is basically what crackling is. So basically I just want a very thin layer. Um, I'd say it's a one millimeter thick. And I'm going to take a baking tray, put it on a baking tray, 
and put it in the freezer until we are going to use it. My pita shoe is rested and I'm ready to pipe my little cream puffs. I have this silicone pad with these marks. If you don't have the silicone pad with such marks, you have just a plain silicone mat or just baking paper. You can also use this little tool, which we're going to use later for crackling. Put a little bit of flour on it and make marks just like that. I'll actually show, t show it to you on the other side. Just like that, you can create the marks and pipe it onto your pad a shoe. But again, I have my marks done and ready. So I'm ready to pipe my beautiful pad a shoe. I want to create a tension in my piping bag. Always, whatever you pipe, make sure you twist it like this and have a tension in it and straight 90 degrees, I'm starting to pipe my pet a shoe. One is ready, one tray. Now on to my second one. Make sure you have enough space for your shoes between your shoes because they going to literally explode in the oven they're going to become three times bigger than we're piping them so i piped my beautiful shoe so there's few different ways to bake your cream puffs if you have electric oven you can preheat your oven to 450 uh, Fahrenheit or 250 Celsius. Then once it's preheated, we're putting in one tray. We're gonna bake it one by one. We're putting one tray of the shoes inside the oven and we're turning it off and we're putting it there for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we're turning the oven back on and we're putting it for 160 Celsius or 320 Fahrenheit. Or if you have a regular or convection oven, you can just do it on 190 Celsius, which is 370 Fahrenheit. So just want to repeat it one more time. I don't want to confuse you. I'm preheating my oven to 450 Fahrenheit to 50 Celsius. Once it's preheated, I'm going to put a tray of my shoe in there for 15 minutes and I'll turn it off. After 15 minutes, I'm going to turn my oven back on and I'm gonna preheat it to 160 Fahrenheit for another 10 or 20 minutes in there. So last touch, we're gonna cut a little thin layer of a cookie, crackling with our cookie cutter. It's going to, it has to be just a little bigger than we piped our shoe. Crackling has been sitting in the freezer since it's such a thin layer of a cookie crust. So I want to unattach two pieces of parchment paper from both sides. Yep. Just like that, I'm placing a thin layer of crackling on top of my shoe. Now, once I feel that my crackling warms up, because it's so thin, it gets cold fast and it gets warm fast, I wanna put it back in the freezer for just a little bit. And I want to put my other tray with already um, with shoes with crackling also in the fridge because they have to be cold. We're still waiting on the oven to preheat. <laughs> now my oven is still preheating. So I put two trays with piped shoes in the fridge. The one that has crackling on top, I put in the freezer and another one that doesn't, I put it in the fridge. So I still have remainings of crackling or sugar cookie dough, however you want to call it. And I could have used it uh, again for, oh, my oven is ready. <laughs> I could have used it, but I wanted to show you how shoes can look like without crackling and why I personally prefer using nice 
thin crackling crust for the cream puffs or for the shoes. Now that my oven is preheated to 450 Fahrenheit, I'm taking out my shoes from the freezer that have crackling on it. I'm putting it in the, in the oven and I'm turning my oven right away because, and I'm putting my timer for 15 minutes. Turning my oven because I have an electric oven and for me, this is the best way of baking my shoes or cream puffs. Now you're just going to see how these little shoes are going to transform in the oven, become so nice and puffy. Also, by any means, for no reason, don't open that oven until the shoes, shoes, it sounds like shoes, cream puffs. Cream puffs are nice and done and fluffy and golden. So only when they're done, so only after 25 minutes, we are, will be able to open the oven. But for now, we're just looking through that little window and peeking on them and seeing how they rise in the oven that is turned off. So my shoes are ready, they look amazing. I did a little mistake, but I did mention to you that you should pipe those shoes far away from each other because as you can see, mine are kind of like stuck together. I wouldn't say it's a bad thing. It's just for me, you know, for me, my family, we're gonna eat it. But if you're a baker, you bake to order, you don't want this to happen basically. So now I'm putting my other tray in the oven. Uh, I, at this time I preheated my oven to 325 Fahrenheit. Also, also uh, I did not put on this tray crackling. So I'm going to show you how shoes or cream puffs will look like without crackling on it. So I'm putting them again on three, 35 minutes without opening by any means my oven. So I just want to show you how you can check if your dough was made correctly and if your cream puff turned out good. It has to be empty inside. First of all, see this crust? This nice crust on top. Oh my God, it's gonna add such an amazing texture to our dessert. And I want to see the inside. Look at this perfect shoe pastry. So since I did this mistake, I just want to separate them. It's very easy to do, honestly. They don't even look any different, I'd say. But still, you want to avoid it. Look how nice and uh, round this one is, while these ones are sort of like not so round. <laughs> so yeah, but the bottoms are amazing. It has nice golden brown bottom. That means it's baked. and. The top is very, very nice golden color, very light golden color. Overall, we baked amazing shoes. I can't wait to fill them with the cream, but for now I have to wait until they cool down and only then I can start fill them up with the cream. Now I have this beautiful dish. And so as always, as I'm saying, we're creating a pressure by twisting the bottom of the, well, the top basically of the piping bag. And I'm taking my cream puff. You can do it from the bottom, create a little uh, hole in it, but I like to do it from the side. So I'll do it from the side, but let me just put it, stick it in first. And now I'm ready to fill it with my cream. Last shoe is filled. And while I remember, I want to show you how my shoe without crackling look like. They also look nice and cute and even pretty, I'd say, but this nice sugar crust, it just changes the whole experience, I promise. To conclude, I just want to say that you can definitely play around with this recipe. You can choose different cream to fill this nice shoes with. Um, you can also decorate them differently. This is 
very classic style of presentation, but obviously you can run your fantasy wild and create different flavors. You can use ganaches for fillings, whipping creams only, whatever you like, confitures too. So basically I'm just giving you a nice classic recipe and you just feel free to play around it. And now I'm finally ready to try it and I can't wait. Oh my God, please, you should see this. Oh my God. It's all vanilla. <laughs> oh my God. Crackling, please, please, please do it. It's so easy. The word sounds intimidating and sounds scary, but it's basically just a thin sugar cookie crust on top. Highly recommend, highly recommend. I love this cream with a lot of vanilla, so also highly recommend using real vanilla beans. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions in the comments. And if you want more recipes, more French-inspired recipes, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you in my next videos.